hello and welcome. Uh, this is another episode of The Overseers. Uh, today we'll be previewing the roster for the New York Excelsior. Uh, this is a team that had their fair share of up and down uh, last year, especially. Uh, them signing a lot of new players, some of them that didn't turn out to be that good. And uh, I mean, I think the team did like actually punch above their weight to some degree because uh, I think the tank line was in a complete mess to some uh, some degree, and uh, the players weren't like exceptional either. But that said, they were still able to like be competitive, even if you know they weren't exceptional. So this year they've got uh, a new r- roster. They've only really retained one player, and uh, they're looking to you know uh, make some waves this year. Uh, now that they're playing in the NA region instead of the APAC region, so. That said, uh, we'll be going over the tanks first and the DPS and the support. Um, so let's get started with uh, the tank, which is Kellen, who's coming from Talon Esports. So what do you have to say about Kellen, uh, Perlius? What do you think about him? Uh, I think Kellen is a really good pickup by the NYXL. I think they've probably scouted this one player really well. Because he has been a really breakout player in Korean contenders as of late. Uh, he joined the scene back in 2020 uh, with the element Mr. Roster. And since then he has showcased some really good play, especially in dive metas on the Winston and the Wrecking Ball. Uh, even his Reinhardt has been quite good. Uh, and I think he has been a really consistent player uh, no matter the team he has been on. Uh, Even with Element Mystic, he got to a lot of second place finishes, uh, then continued the trend with Talon Esports, and he has never been out of the talk for uh, one of the best main tanks in the Korean contenders scene, uh, at least in the past couple of years. So I think it's a really good pickup in general for the NYXL, and certainly an upgrade over Yakpang, whom they had last year. Yeah, I think... uh... I've seen him play quite well on the Winston and Reinhardt especially, but uh, I don't think I've seen a bunch of Urisa out of him, to be honest, or ball play. So that's something that I may be questioning a little bit. Uh, that said, would you also like to talk about the DPS line, uh, either Flora or Yaki? Sure. So I think Flora and Yaki are in kind of similar positions. I think everyone except Kellen, to be honest, is in a sort of similar position where they have had really high highs a while back but they had a bit of a slump in the past year or two so flora is naturally someone who fits that description uh, because even though he was one of the standout players from the nyxl last year uh, mainly because barely anyone else on the team was making any plays he did have pretty good hit scan mechanics Uh, his ash and his cassidy were especially good but he wasn't a very consistent player uh, because he had some really explosive performances for a couple of weeks after which people started praising him a lot uh, but then he just went silent uh, during all the other occasions so i think he's objectively good but will struggle against a lot of hit scans in the league uh, and especially in the any region he's going to be up against players like xz happy hisu you know uh, just to name a few so i think he will struggle and alongside him naturally there's yaki coming in from the florida mayhem uh, who's very famous for his tracer play. Uh, but I don't think he makes plays consistently on heroes other than tracers. It's, it's kind of like a Shaxx type situation, although Yaki is only a few notches above Shaxx, uh, because he also does play heroes like Mei, Echo, Farah, and Genji. Uh, so if he can level up his play on his other picks, I think he can be a formidable oppo- opponent. But right now, unless he's on Tracer, I think a lot of flex DPS players can hold a candle to him. You know, he's up against a few great players like Sparkle, Pelican, Proper, Kevster. None of which I think he's better than overall. So just because of the the competition surrounding him, I think his value is going to be undermined a little bit. Yeah, I think I do agree with your general take on both of these players. I think for Flora, you could see that people were sort of underestimating him because he came from like a bottom-seeded team in uh, contenders when he was signed 
because Team Diamond wasn't doing that, uh, that hot at that time. But once he did come in, you could see that slowly he developed himself into an Overwatch League caliber player uh, with some weak performances in the beginning, but like he seemed to get stronger and stronger as time went on. Um, he did actually play better than Guangbung, uh, who I was expecting more out of, uh, just based off of his sheer mechanical ability. But Flora showed that he's you know a good all-rounder to have. Uh, Obviously, did not have that insane like giga flexibility that you really want uh, out of like a top top tier player. But uh, he was flexible enough to the point where uh, I would be comfortable fielding Flora like permanently almost. And I mean, uh, Dino Axel don't really have a choice in that sense since they only have two DPS uh, signed uh, supposedly. So yeah, what do you think about this DPS line overall, playlist? Uh, like I said before Nightwing, I think these guys are serviceable, but they need to be firstly more consistent and secondly more explosive. And they also don't have any backup player. I, I really see them lacking that kind of sniper specialist, uh, which Flora hasn't really proven to be. Uh, he has played the Ash, uh, the Cassidy uh, and the Tracer for the most part for this team. Uh, but they need someone who can pick up heroes like the Widowmaker and the Hanzo more consistently. So I think if they had someone like, well, someone like Exe, for example, I think that would have been a fantastic pickup for this team. Uh, but naturally, they don't have that option. And all in all, I think they're going to struggle. And um, I really wish they do pick up another DPS to round out this roster. Do you think it's enough to have these two guys covering the bases for the Invexel? I think, uh, honestly, this DPS line is not terrible because, like, Flora did show some decent flexibility and Yaki is also, like, fairly flexible on projectile as well as, uh, play, like, heroes like the Cassidy, which he picked up at times when BQB was uh, playing something else. It was rare, though, and generally you would see, like, players like BQB pick it up for him. Uh, that said, I think this year they could probably use another DPS, but... I'm really hoping that that sixth person they've signed is is a tank, honestly, because uh, I think uh, Kellen hasn't shown a fl lot of flexibility himself, if I remember correctly. Like, I've only majorly seen Winston and maybe Ryan gameplay from him, and not a lot else, uh, if I can remember correctly. Like, uh, I think m most of the times that, like, Kellen played that, uh, like, dive comp, you would see him on the Winston and not so much on the ball. I think uh, that may just need, uh, like, the tank line may need something to bolster themselves. Uh, the DPS line could use an addition, maybe for some sort of, like, double hit scan sort of thing. But I think generally, Yaki is explosive enough to the point that, you know, he was an MVP candidate at some point. And he is, like, an incredibly solid player, I think. The only time you've seen him completely and utterly defeated on Tracer... Uh, is, you know, by players like Striker or other players of that level, uh, like in, in just like a fair 1v1, right? So if he's got the resources, he should be able to make do uh, pretty well. Uh, I think uh, Flora should also work quite well with him. It's just that uh, probably they could use like one Hyperflex uh, just to, so, to like cover all their bases, but I think they're also like not in a terrible position, if I'm being honest, because these are two really good DPS to have. Mm -hmm. All right, I think let's move on to the support line then. Uh, should we start about start off with uh, Gangnam Jin Nightwing? Yeah, sure. So I think Gangnam Jin is in that sort of weird spot where you saw that he played really, really well in season three and decently in season four, but the team sort of was uh, the team he was on, Florida Mayhem, was just completely lost. And it was hard to really attribute any merits or demerits to him. And that's why you didn't really see a lot of uh, this buzz about Gangnam Jin last year. He did play like uh, a decent variety of flex supports. He covered, you know, the Zen, Bap, uh, Bap Ana, and Moira. Uh, I mean, they even tried to pull off that duplicates comp for a little bit. Um, and I don't think Gangnam Jim was necessarily the weak link there. I don't think he's like even top 10 best flex supports of all time. He, I'd probably put him at like 11th. Uh, but he's like actually 
quite a good player still and i think he can definitely still hold his own going into overwatch too i mean at at the very least he does not have those hang ups uh, similar to violet where he doesn't like pick any one of the flex supports right i can see gangnam jin is probably coachable enough and will work well enough in uh, within the team system to maybe even play like main supports because he is like a, quite a flexible player hmm so ideally though between gangnam jin and byonbong i would probably want to see gangnam jin play the flex support i personally think he's probably better but due to his flexibility you may just see him pick up like um the main support role in case the sixth player that the nyxl has signed but not announced is not a main support player yeah uh i do agree with you that gangnam jin is still a fairly good player uh, last year especially i think he played well on uh, the moira in the new goats meta and his bap has always been good even when we saw his team playing double shield in season 3 uh in those uh, bunker comps uh and even in rush comps to be honest uh, he was like a mechanical carry during some fights so i think he is a player with high potential uh, last year he didn't stand out much uh maybe because his team was bad but i don't i can't really put my finger on how exactly he played because just because of uh, how well we Uh, just because of how we analyze the team as a whole rather than uh, the sum of its parts last year so i think he needs to step up his game a little bit uh, and just play more consistently because i think he's got a lot of potential in him and uh, naturally he's also alongside myonbong who uh, also played decently well uh, last year and he's also fairly flexible uh, has played all the different flex supports to a pretty good level and last year he just didn't pop off like he used to back in season 3 and before that so once again like i said the general trend for this team other than kellen is players that used to be really good but are now somewhat outclassed by some newcomers or just uh, the more god tier or consistent players in their respective roles so i think uh, despite the fact that yes these guys can play uh, double flex support well they do like a main support as well which i think is a an obvious weakness in their roster right now in addition to naturally not having an off tank player uh, but i think this is something they do need to look at pretty expeditiously because uh, especially going into this moira lucio meta reportedly in overwatch 2 uh, they are going to need a really good lucio player who's going to provide a lot of peel for the backline since there's not going to be a dedicated off tank for that Yeah, I think that's fair. I think uh Myeonbong though, I feel like uh Myeonbong racked up a lot of sympathy points almost in season 3 uh because of how poorly the Boston Uprising played and they had these constant uh you know quote and quote toilet bowls um and their performance was just so terrible that Myeonbong stood out because he was slightly less terrible than the rest of the team. That said, I don't think he's like actually up there with some of the best and uh, it's hard for them him to really compete with that sort of uh, level of gameplay i think in that sense he's in a similar situation to gangnam jin um but probably even worse because you haven't seen myeonbong actually succeed uh, so far in the past two years he did like have some level of success obviously in when he played in contenders but that was a very long while ago at this point and I think players like Gangnam Jin and Myeonbong uh Myeonbong especially are going to have to show that they've still got it in them because there are rookies that are being signed this year that are quite strong for example you know Vigilante or even Ultraviolet for the Atlanta Rain um and so compared to you know rookies like those these players that have established themselves for a number of years in the Overwatch League now uh have to show that they've still got it because Yeah, wh- one of the things that they'll be required to do is probably play uh, main support, which is I think going to be tough for either of them. Um and the other thing they're going to have to do is show that they're actually good on flex support, which is another challenge. Um because they haven't really been exceptional uh, at least in recent history. So with that, I think the support line is also like quite weak. So in that sense i think the dps line may just be like the s- strongest part of this team 
uh, because I think the tank line needs some help and the support line is also a, a little bit washed, if I'm being honest, uh, and does need like at least a main support to help it be somewhat competitive. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think just even though Kellen is a really promising main tank prospect, just not having a dedicated player to cover off tanks is quite quite um, a weakness in the roster and I think a lot of teams are going to look to patch that up. Like we just saw the announcement from the Philly Fusion today that they've uh, signed Bel- Belrosia from Contenders Korea uh, to play the main tank for them because naturally Fury isn't comfortable on all the main tank heroes. So I think the NYXL might just have an off tank already picked up that they aren't announcing. Uh, with the the kind of lesser likely but still pretty likely uh, outcome that they might have signed a main support player. Uh, but I think if they got somebody, for example, like Gargoyle, who, who's got synergy with Yaki uh, as well as Gangnam Jin, uh, and has also got an, a visa for North America, uh, would be a really good pickup for the team. Uh, other options would be, you know, players like uh, maybe Michelle, who's also a Korean who's gotten any visa uh, or maybe even to who hasn't gotten any visa before but is still a promising off tank prospect to some extent so i think the off tank is pretty crucial in this context and another thing that's really crucial is how good the coaches can actually guide this team in the new meta so should we talk about them nightwing yeah i think you made some good suggestions though i think a few of those players have you know, quote-unquote retired, even though retirement means almost nothing in Overwatch, if I'm being honest. Uh, so I think uh, those could be good ish, uh, additions, and it's possible that the NYXL may have actually signed one of those players. Uh, but I'm not really sure, because they seem to be very cryptic about this. So For some reason, they're not announcing a player that the league requires them to sign, which is just kind of weird from them. I think... Uh, before we get into the coaches, I think I'm, I'll just like to throw my conspiracy theory out there that they they have like signed someone on like a short term contract instead of like a long term contract, and so they were just trying to get another player and then then sort of present whatever sixth player they had as like a substitute or something. Uh, so that's just my crazy conspiracy theory out there. I don't know what it's actually like in the rules, but yeah. Uh, so anyway, let's talk about the. Uh, you know, the supporting staff, the coaching staff. So they've got Kuki on head coach and they've got uh, Undyne on assistant coach. So what do we think about this coaching staff, Prolis? So this coaching staff is really interesting. Uh, I think with Kuki coming in now as the head coach, uh, they've got somebody who has worked with Yaki and Gangnam Jin from the Florida Mayhem and has got experience studying the NA landscape and some of these other teams around him. And Kuki has got pretty good results in the past in the NA region. So I think we can have some faith in him to do things right. Um, I think him signing all of these other Korean players um, makes sense because again, you don't want any communication gap uh, within your lineup as far as possible. So. I think it's a good signing by the NYXL to have Kuki over here and they've also got uh, some assistant coaches to help him out, uh, naturally with Undyne being one of them. Uh, Oh, I believe it's just Undyne now, never mind. Yep. Yeah, so Undyne is again, he used to play uh, support back in Contenders Korea alongside Unique who's currently playing main support on the Guangzhou charge. So Undyne has also got a good bit of experience. coaching in the league since 2020 uh, when he joined the XLC in the first place so with him and Kuki I think it's going to be a good mix of the eastern and western understandings of how the games work uh, like how, of how the game works my bad so it'll be an interesting amalgamation of ideas and thoughts and hopefully the team can benefit from it I think the good thing about uh, Kuki's coaching system is that Players do generally seem to respect him, and sometimes that that is taken for granted in the Overwatch League because there's many 
uh, coaches that you know require and demand respect, but they don't actually get it or don't actually deserve it. I think you could see in season three that like Cookie's coaching was actually effective. Um, that said, I think you have to consider that season three is just as important as their season four. It's not like um, you know, uh, season four did not happen. Like the Florida Mayhem did genuinely have a very terrible season. It was quite terribly managed. Uh, Cookie was not able to work with the player managers and the rest of the supportive staff to create a good environment for, you know, OG to develop as a player. And he got burnt out and was not able to actually perform at the right level. Um, and then they put in checkmate. They didn't make the right signings at the right time. Uh, so you have to also, like, the good has to come with the bad. And, I mean, there was a lot of bad in that season four. That said, you know, season three, they looked very competitive. They were, I think, third in the NA region, if I remember correctly. Uh, the Florida Mayhem, uh, a lot of the time. And they were, like, really, really competitive. They would make these hero plays and were also exceptionally coordinated. So I think uh, there's definitely some merit in giving Cookie another chance because obviously in the latter half of Season 4, they didn't have a main tank to work with. Um, and obviously, sometimes it's just budgetary constraints that you cannot work around as a head coach as, as some of the decisions come from the gms and the actual org sponsoring you so i think i can give cookie the benefit of the doubt there and also look at undyne undyne actually has also played heroes like mercy alongside uh you know the regular flex support uh, business so maybe he can actually help uh, the support line pick up main support alongside flex support uh, that's just wishful thinking on my part though uh, I think he does have some ex uh, experience even coaching like contenders alongside uh, tier one. So I think there's definitely something to be said about uh, this coaching staff still being redeemable and uh, they can still work around this team because they've got decent pieces, honestly. Uh, they just need a few more to round it out and they need some of their players to step up from their past level of gameplay, which I think these players have the potential to do. They're not players that have consistently shown that they're burnt out. They've just shown that they've fallen slightly behind. And I think if you look at a player like Crimzo, right, uh, he was someone that had been sort of written off in season three, but then he, he did actually reinvent himself. He showed an excessively like improved level of gameplay in season four with the Houston Outlaws. So I think these players also have the potential to do that. Uh, because they have shown that, like, at, at the at a fundamental level, they are like good players. Uh, what do you think, Proteus? Yeah, I think uh, all in all, this team has got some potential uh, to be competitive in the NA region. Uh, they've naturally got a lot of firepower with Flora and Yaki, or rather, should I say, potential firepower. Uh, but I think they definitely need to have an off tank player because Skellen isn't entirely flexible even within the full main tank role like we haven't seen a lot of forest out of him uh his wrecking ball has only recently been quite good just because the the korean region was just spamming ball sigma all the time uh so i think if kellen does not have the flexibility to play those off tank heroes which i really doubt he does because you have to remember that all of these players playing at the highest level they put almost all of their time playing the heroes that they are essentially paid to play. And Kellen naturally not not paid to play off-tank heroes. So he spent so much time developing a main tank mentality that it's it's very difficult for him to adapt to the off-tank playstyle. Very few players have managed to be uh, competitive on... Uh, they have managed to be hyperflexes on the tank role. Uh, just to name a few, you've naturally got super... Uh, then you've got um, you've got Stan One who used to play all the main tanks. Plus he played a good hog for the Shanga Dragons in season three. Then you also had Jess Show who could play a lot of main tanks plus the hog. Uh, then Marvel to some extent since he can flex on to Sig. Uh, so there are very few of these players that can probably fill in a good solo tank role within the team. And Kellen just does not seem to be one of them. So I really hope they've signed an off tank. Otherwise. 
uh, I think they're going to just have to rely on their EPS to make all the plays all the time. And Flora and Yaki doesn't seem like enough consistent firepower to do that. I, I'm i just waiting for them to sign some kind of sniper specialist. I would honestly even be down to see Pine rejoining the team, uh, just for the meme of it. Uh, just so that they have somebody who can play those long range with scan heroes really consistently. Uh, naturally, Flora can do it. But I could see, I genuinely could see Pine as a pickup here because of how secret the team has kept this uh, sixth play on the roster. So, yeah, all in all, I think this team is definitely going to struggle. But there will be more to discuss when we know who the sixth play on the NYXL is. And naturally, when we do our power rankings episode. Yeah, so that just about wraps it up, I feel. Um, in terms of just general placement, though, I th are there teams that you think will do worse than the NYXL this season? Uh, if you can, if you think there's any teams you can name that you think will be around the same level of or maybe worse than the NYXL? I feel in the NA region, the Vancouver Titans are definitely down there. Uh, even though they've got a more organized kind of system and with false as the solo off tank, um, I think the NYXL just have enough like more proven talent uh, and just talent with more playtime at the Overwatch League level than the Vancouver Titans do. So I think they can consistently beat out that roster. They might even be better than the London Spitfire who are currently lacking a flex support player. Uh, these two are definitely teams that I think they can beat, even with this current lineup. Uh, but they will struggle against even some other kind of mid-table teams that we can see, like you know the Paris Tunnel or the uh, brand new Guardians of the Galaxy, Florida Mayhem, uh, even the Boston Uprising. I think. So yeah, it's going to be a climb up the hill for the NYXL this season. Yeah, I think I actually agree with most of those team choices. Uh, so I think that just about wraps it up. Thank you for watching slash listening, guys. Um, if you have any comments about what you think the NYXL will play, and if you have any guesses on who the mystery loot box sixth player is, then let us know in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode where we'll talk about our final remaining team before we go into the uh, power rankings episode, of course, is the Chengdu Hunters. So see you guys then and bye-bye. Uh,